Morning, Mum. Morning, dear. You were late last night. Mum, I'm 21 now. You don't have to wait up for me. I wasn't waiting up for you, Craig. I always do the ironing at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and you're out having fun. You did have fun, didn't you? Yes, Mum. Oh, good boy. I hate suffering through the ironing for nothing. Yes, Mum. There you are. Where's Dad? Oh, dear, he's going to be late. Ted! Breakfast's ready and you're going to be late if you don't hurry up. Come Do on, be Ted. quiet, woman. <laughs> oh, no, it's Dad's army. Don't you dad me, boy. I'm your father. Now, will you both shut up? Sorry, dear. <laughs> oh, you've made him angry. What the hell's he doing? Shh. Squatting behind the hydrangea bush. <laughs> Why can't he use a toilet like everyone else? <laughs> soap and water, Craig. Soap and water. The gutter is no place for a medical student to keep his tongue. What? Enough said is enough forgotten. Well, what's he doing out there? He's waiting for Jack. Jack who? Jack the good old bandit. Who? <laughs> you know Jack, the three-legged fox terrier from next door. The one who steals all the greyhound's food. Leaves his little calling cards on the tires of the car. <laughs> Your father's going to ambush him with the hose. Oh, yeah. Have Nilex will travel. <laughs> oh, he's mad. Don't ever catch Jack. Look at last time when he tried to chase him with the victor. All he did was turn rhubarb into lawn. Yes. Be that as it ought, Craig. Your father says this time he'll get him. Apparently, it can't fail. <laughs> I think he forgot to tell Jack it can't fail. <laughs> Look, Mum, it's Ben Crop. <laughs> He's been sleeping in our bathtub. Listen, boy, I've had quite enough Gee, of your... Mr Crop, Dad would love to meet you. Hey, Dad! I've had quite enough of your smart-ass university humour. Ted, you're soaked. I am not soaked, Thelma. I am just... Covered in water. Oh. Jack got him with his water pistol. Ted, go and get out of those wet things before you catch a death of sneeze. In a minute. Bloody dog. Snuck up behind me, randy little animal. <laughs> I was stuck in me jammies and the nozzle blew off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Well, don't worry, Dad. We'll give you some rubber sheets. Don't give me the rubber sheets, boy. You weren't up at 5 a.m. in the morning guarding the front lawn against terrier twirlies. Well, no one else was either. And why the tin hat? Did you think they were going to drop in your head? <laughs> this is no ordinary tin hat, boy. General Blamey ate a, a stew out of this hat. Why? Because he was hungry. <laughs> General Blamey was a real man's man. None of your punsy deodorants for him. No, he was so tough he had khaki soap. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Put on your smartex and take off that silly hat. It's not a silly hat, Thelma. It's a world it? famous tin hat, Mum. Roman used to keep his goldfish in it. <laughs> now, listen, boy. Now, Ted, don't you go catching a cold and spoiling my trip. Trip? Trip? Where are you going? I told you weeks ago I'm going to Melbourne. Melbourne? You're not taking the Kingswood. <laughs> I've just ironed the mud flaps. <laughs> no, you're not taking the Kingswood anywhere, especially Melbourne. I don't want all those Moomba lights wrecking the Duco. Ted, you are silly. We are going by plane. We? What we? Greta and me, we. Remember? We're going to the wedding. The one I'm going to over your dead body. Oh, you mean your sister's girl, the one that walks like an emu? <laughs> yes. It's tomorrow. I won't be back till Sunday, Arvo. Are you going to miss me? Who's going to cook? I've arranged everything. You better hurry up or you're going to be late. You haven't even warmed up the car yet. It's not a car, Thelma. It's a Kingswood. <laughs> hey, Dad. If you back the car out quick, you might get Jack. He's about to drop another twirly on the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Thelma. Just one chop for Ricky today. Got to watch the cholesterol, you know. Oh, and only two snags. <laughs> Nippy out there this morning, Phil. Greyhards didn't want to come out of their box. <laughs> Had to turn off the electric blanket and freeze them out. <laughs> Took them for a big walk, but <laughs> all the way down to the letterbox and back. <laughs> Repco lad really enjoyed it. 
He even climbed out of the wheelbarrow a couple of times. <laughs> Just as well. Just as well, actually. Gaia Cooper's getting a bit fat. I'm worried about that dog. She slept through the walk again. <laughs> I think she could be uh, sickening for something, Phil. She only ate five cans of Pal for breakfast. <laughs> Elmer? Where is everyone? Where's my brickie? Vilma? <laughs> Bloody woman up at five o'clock packing a suitcase. I can't sleep, I've got to go to Melbourne. Banging around the hall cupboard. I can't be quiet, I'm going to Melbourne. Vilma? Yes, Ted? Where's my brickie? I can't get brickie, I'm going to Melbourne. <laughs> Nutty woman. You want something quick? There's some cordies in the box. Cordies in the box? Oh, but watch out for the little plastic muppet. You almost choked on Kermit last yeah. week. <laughs> Stupid plastic frog. Why don't I give you a plastic frog with your cornies? What's that got to do with breakfast? Should give you a pair of socks. Here's <laughs> to pack. Mm. Tick. 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 Toaster. Toaster? Well, that's a bit rough, isn't it? Giving him a second-hand toaster as a wedding present? It's not the present. Well, what are you taking a toaster to Melbourne for? To make toast. <laughs> Tell me, this wedding has already cost me three weeks of crude sick pay, and I am not having you and Greta tarried hooting around some posh Melbourne motel making toast like it grew on trees. No, you're just going to suffer with room service like the rest of us. You got to close, Craig. It's not going to go, Mum. You'll have to take something out. Of course it'll close. Get your father to sit on it. Oh, Ted, sit on that suitcase. Strike me green, woman. What have you got in there, the incinerator? Don't be silly. They're all essentials. Well, you're going to have to leave this behind. <laughs> Pick on me, grandmother, woman. What are you taking a radiator to Melbourne for? It'll be cold in Melbourne. Haven't you heard about air conditioning? I have, but I don't know that Melbourne has. What do you want to take a radio for? So I can hear the Sydney news. <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne news is strange. <laughs> they don't have James Dibble. Of course they have James Dibble. The whole bloody country has James Dibble. You can sit on Ayers Rock and get James Dibble. He's everywhere, you can't escape him. <laughs> Captain Cook didn't know where he was till James Dibble told him. <laughs> Craig, you shouldn't make jokes about James Dibble. He can't help it if he works for the ABC. <laughs> Greta isn't late. We've only got four hours before the plane goes. I'll put this out in the front porch. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, Ted, don't forget to sign the card. Oh. What are we giving him? Oh, something from Myers, of course. Bloody Myers, someone should blow that place up. <laughs> Why don't give them something for their new home? Something that'll give them a good start. What? An electric chutney maker. <laughs> We've been married for 30 years and we haven't got one of them. We have now. I bought two. <laughs> They're a wonderful machine, Ted. You know, they glow in the dark so you can make chutney during a blackout. <laughs> you signed the card? Well, uh, wedding bells are in the air. May love's great compass steer a happy course. We wish you joy, we wish you cheer, and hope it doesn't end in divorce. <laughs> Lovely sentiments, Phil. I thought so. Yeah. To Panda and Bob. Panda? Where'd you get a name like Panda? Oh, Les and Betty named her after a barrel, girl. Could have named her after the barrel. <laughs> Ted, you've signed the card to whom it may concern. <laughs> Mr. E. Boopit. That's my name, isn't it? <gasps> You're her uncle. Oh, give us it. To whom it may concern, Mr. E. Boopit, bracket. Her uncle closed bracket. Oh, that's much nicer. <laughs> oh, there's the taxi and Greta isn't here yet. I'll miss the plane. I'll miss the wedding. Oh, oh, just a minute. The yellow cab's turned purple. Purple? <laughs> That'll be the wog in his oily valiant. <laughs> Don't you let him park in that driveway. Bruno is not a wog. He is an ethnic son-in-law. Why can't he be an Australian ethnic son-in-law? <laughs> Now, have I forgot everything? Well, I don't know, woman. Oh, Ted, quick apples. I need apples. What for? It says on the ticket I have to give some to the fruit fly man in Melbourne. <laughs> Tell my Bob, it's your dad. Oh, Ted. Oh, Greta, you're here. Yes, hello, Mum. Oh, hello, Bruno. Hello, Mrs B. Ted, Greta and Bruno are here. No. Well, say hello. Hello, Dad. 
Uh... <laughs> you sure this is going to be all right? Yes, of course. Shh. Anyway, where's your luggage, dear? Oh, here. Is that all? Yes, Mum, it's only overnight. Oh, well, Greta. I suppose you're old enough to know what you're doing, but remember, you're never too old to have luggage. Yes, Mum. Look, you can have some of mine if you like. No, Mum. I your luggage. I really have. There's a yellow cab outside. Oh, is it yellow? Yeah. That'd be the cab. Quick, <laughs> Greta, oh, get changed. Why? Well, you're not going like that, are you? Yes, why not? Greta, we're going on a plane. T-A-A. Aren't you going to wear a dress? Mike Walsh goes on planes. Mike Walsh wears a dress on planes? <laughs> Does he? Mum. I'll put the luggage in the taxi. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the way, Mum, I'll come with you and you can drop me off at uni on the way. Oh, I don't think the plane lands at uni, do you? <laughs> a taxi, Mum. Oh. <laughs> Calm down, Mrs B. You've got plenty of time. Now, have you got the tickets? Yes. No. We, yes. Oh. Oh, no. oh, we're going now, Ted. Oh, have a good trip. Oh. What about my dinner? Oh, yes, your dinner. When it's all arranged. Bye-bye, dear. Come on, Greg. Just a minute. What do you mean it's all arranged? Well, I know you're going to have a wonderful time, you and Craig. You're going to be looked after like a king, and you don't even have to cook it. Why not? Because Bruno's cooking it. Come on, Greg. <laughs> Bon appétit. Bloody wog. On. Smells great, doesn't it? I can't smell a thing. Even if I could, it wouldn't smell any good. No, can't smell anything at all. That's strange. Always considered you were good at smelling. You want a beer? To buy some, did you? Well, no, it was in the fridge. That'd be right. Did you leave some money there? No. That'd be right. Well, do you want one? Well, it is mine, isn't it? Right, one beer coming up. You don't mind if I have one, do you? It's too late now, isn't it? <laughs> that vehicle you're still parked in the driveway? Yeah. That'd be right. <laughs> Valiant rust all over the driveway. <laughs> it doesn't rust any more than any other car. Kingswoods don't rust. <laughs> that left-hand rear wheel's got it. Why? I just saw a three-legged fox terrier doing a job on it. Bloody <laughs> Jack, I wish he'd stay out of my garden. They must put Caro in his drinking water. <laughs> Stripped all the paint off the concrete Aboriginal's feet. <laughs> Neville's the only decorative Aboriginal in Australia with white feet. <laughs> Looks like he's been dancing in Rinso. Oh, the footy's on. You mind if I watch television? Oh, you do what you like. Right, Terry Bright is up, can't take the mark. Turn it down, turn it down. Oh, yeah. into an open goal Electricity doesn't grow on trees, you know. <laughs> what? You heard. <laughs> What's that? Football. Bull dust. If that's football, why aren't they bleeding? <laughs> look, look at it. Not a broken nose among them. <laughs> it's not rugby. It's real football. Australian rules. Real football? Ha! <laughs> Look at them. Bunch of pansies skipping around their little sister's shorts. <laughs> oh, look out. One of the puffs has thrown a tiz and kicked the ball into the crowd. <laughs> oh, are they shouting at you, are they, Tinkerbell? <laughs> Never mind. Your boyfriend's giving you a big hug. <laughs> All better. He just scored a goal. Gorn. 
Look at them. The other side are a bit weak, aren't they? One goal and they surrender. See? This? The coach is waving a white flag. That's the goal umpire. Hello. They've stopped. What are they doing now? Oh, the poor little things are all puffed out. It's three-quarter time. Well, who's he? What sort of footballer wears a suit? That's Ron Barassi. <laughs> He's the coach. Coach in a suit? Bull. He's the hairdresser, bringing on the hot rollers and gossamer. <laughs> Bloody stupid game, it'll never catch on. Well, at least it's real football. At least they kick the ball. Real footballers, rugby footballers don't kick the ball. They kick the groin. <laughs> Why? Because they're tough. Rugby players are so tough, they train in barbed wire jock straps. <laughs> it's true. Good day, Dad, Bruno. Yeah. Good day, Craig. How are you? Oh, wow. VFL. Who's playing? Just a minute, boy. I thought you were going to the real football, the rugby, this afternoon. It was cancelled. The ground was a bit wet and they thought the players would catch cold. <laughs> that was fantastic, Bruno. Where'd you learn to cook like that? My mum taught me. That'd be right. I bet she was Italian, too. <laughs> Geez, that's amazing, Mr. Bullpit. My mother was Italian. How'd you work that out? I know these things. <laughs> Dad, it really is terrific. There's plenty left. Why don't you have some? Well, go on. You've got to be joking, haven't you? No, I've had my dinner. What? A bit of bread and bloody veggie, mate. What sort of meal's that? An Anzac meal, boy. <laughs> I don't want to hear one word against bloody Vegemite. If it's good enough for Gallipoli, it's good enough for me. You never saw any spaghetti at the Dardanelles. Well, well, you at least have a glass of wine, Mr. Bullpit. Mm -hmm. Who bought it? I did. That'd be right, it's gone flat. <laughs> I bought it to match his head. No, you can keep your wog juice. I'll just clear up and uh, go and check on the dogs. I'll give you a hand. No, I can manage. That'd be right. Change your mind, did you? No, no, I was just. Well, you better watch out or I'll tell the RSL. You wouldn't dare. I was just testing it to see if I could give it to the dogs. But I'm, but I'm not going to, so there. <laughs> oh, the look on his face. Yeah. You want a tip? Oh, I'll have one. He'll probably stay out there all night with a greyhound. It's munching through the good as. <laughs> right, me green and pickle meat brand, mother! What's wrong? It's Gaia Kubra. She's sick. Oh, what are you is... talking about? She's dying. Her nose is like a furnace. Quick, call the dog doctor. Where's the bloody phone book? I'll have a look at her. Well, what would you know? I'm a medical student, aren't I? I'm learning to be a doctor. Be gentle with her. She's not a, not a person, you know. Where's the bloody phone book? Phone book, phone book. Where's the bloody phone book? Where the hell is that woman flying the phone book? Find time for her to go to Melbourne when she knows I might need the phone book. Is this what you're looking for? Where'd you find that? Under the phone. Smart ass. <laughs> Vet. Vet. You'll find it under V. I know that. Well, why are you looking under postcode? Listen, one. Calm down, man. It's all right. She's not sick. What do you mean she's not sick? Of course she's sick. She's not sick. She's having pups. What? Pups? Real pups? Dog pups? <laughs> Baby greyhounds? Yes. <sighs> what do you know? Repco Lab has done it at last. <laughs> I'm gonna be a father! <laughs> Unfortunate moment when Panda got her finger stuck in the electric chutney maker. <laughs> but she'll be out of hospital on Monday, so she'll be able to have a bit of a honeymoon. Where's Ted? Oh, he's out the back. He's got a bit of a surprise for you. Don't tell me he's done the washing up. No, not quite as big as that. What then? Surprise, surprise. 
Gaya Cooper is a proud mother, Phil. Oh. Isn't he a little champion? Oh, he certainly is. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, who's the father? Rip Colette, of course. Are you sure? Doesn't look a bit like Rip Colette. That... Yes, he looks exactly like Jack the Foxy next door. Oh. Really? Oh. 